God is a good God as well. God is a good God. Um, he does things for us before we even uh, know that we need them or we even know that we are a part of them. That's the type of God that we have and we, we just thank God for uh, being God and sparing our life just one more time that it's good to be in the service. Mm -hmm. Good to be in the service. Mm -hmm. We certainly want to thank everyone who came before us thus far. Um, Brother McCutcheon for our leading our hearts and minds as psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Um, and we thank those who have offered up prayers, those who have served on the Lord's table. And we thank you for your participation as well. We know that this is a team effort. This is a team Amen. effort. Amen. 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 Um, so uh, one of the ways that we see team work um, or a, a team collaboration is when we sing. When we sing, all of us sound good together. When we open up our mouths and we let this little light of ours shine. Amen. 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 This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Amen. Amen. I'm going to make a joyful noise. It might not Amen. sound good for you, but it sounds good to God because Amen. I'm singing, singing from the heart. Singing from the heart. So we want to continue. We want to continue um, to do that. Uh, one of the announcements that I failed to mention, next Sunday we will have a guest speaker, um, and we are looking forward to um, hearing the guest speaker. We originally announced Clyde Mayberry, our Charlotte, but um, he already informed me that he may have another commitment. And sure enough, he had another commitment. Uh, so we're going to have um, DeMarco Owens out of uh, Columbia as our guest speaker. And some of the youth had the opportunity to meet him, and some of us had the opportunity to meet him when we went down there for um, the youth rally. So he's going to be with us next Sunday. And also, we're going to have a dinner following um, the services, and we're going to reflect on the year um, that we have been able to serve here um, at the Hartsville Church of Christ. So um, we want you to take time out and um, be a part of that, and we want you to come out and uh, reflect with us as we get ready to look at the year that we have here and um, look at where we're going as well. Amen. 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 Oh God, y'all ain't ready. Y'all, y'all might not like this sermon where I'm about to go this morning. Y'all, y'all ain't liking that. Y'all might not really like where I'm about to go this morning. Amen. Amen. We about to go somewhere as well. Matter of fact, I might as well give you the title. The title is Excellent Ministry, Excellent Appreciation. Amen. Excellent Ministry, Excellent Appreciation. And, and y'all see where we derived our title from. But we, as you all know, we've been studying and we've been preaching and laboring from the book of Hebrews. And on last Sunday, we were in Hebrews chapter number seven. And on this Sunday, we are going into Hebrews chapter number eight. And we want to look at um, the verses that's laid out in Hebrews chapter number eight. And then we're going to preach and labor from that title. Um, it's always good to have um, my wife with me, uh, and Elijah is making his presence known, uh, but uh, we, we want to continue to pray for him as well. Amen. He knows when to say amen and when not to say amen. Amen. But uh, uh, continue to uh, pray for us as well as a family unit. Uh, Hebrews chapter number eight. Hebrews chapter number eight. And as I go over there, I, I tell you, we already said that it seems like God has us exactly where we need to be, where we need to be there. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't have planned this better because I just picked up the Bible and said, okay, we're going to start studying from this book. Come on, y'all. Y'all remember who was there when we started in Galatians? Amen. It was just where God had placed us at the time. And I don't know if y'all been with us. It seemed like every Sunday where we needed to be is where we were in the scripture. Amen. And, and, and I don't know about y'all, but when I was studying this and especially looking back on being a year here at Hartsville, this chapter deals with the life of a minister in ministry. 
And, and we're going to look at the scripture under that theme. And, and for those who don't know, maybe you don't know, but uh, today is Clergy Appreciation Day. Uh, it's Pastor's Appreciation Day. I, some of y'all didn't get the memo, um, but, but uh, I'm giving y'all the memo now. Um, and, and, you know, the thing is, when, when we talk about a day like Pastor's Appreciation Day, one of the things that come to mind is, when we look at the Bible, sometimes we miss out on what the scriptures say, and then God has to use an outside source to prompt us to do what we should be doing anyway. Oh God, oh God. Uh, uh, some of us, well, I don't celebrate holidays, but you know, when, when Mother's Day come around, come on y'all. Amen. Well, I'm a mother. Yeah, I, I take the adoration that comes with motherhood because you understand the labor that comes with motherhood. Amen. Father Day come around, you know, I, I didn't implement fatherhood. I didn't implement Father's Day, but nonetheless, I am a father. Amen. Also, I'm going to take that time to acknowledge my father, you know, and, and I thank God for my father. I thank God for my father. And, and sometimes, we, we don't have the opportunity to appreciate those who have blessed us in one area or another. And, and, and I stop by to tell you, sometimes you, you cannot do it, but you still can appreciate what they've done in your life. Amen. And, and one of the ways that we show our appreciation when we cannot show them that we appreciate them because maybe they have transitioned or they have went on, but one of the ways that you show that you appreciated what somebody done in your life is the fact you can't pay them back, but you can pay it forward. Amen. Amen. Oh, God. Oh, God. You, you can't pay them back, yes. but you can pay it forward. Maybe you Amen. can't directly bless the one who blessed you, yes. but you can bless somebody else showing that you appreciate the fact that somebody blessed you when you were in the self-same situation. Amen. Am I preaching yet? Okay, okay. I want to read something. I want to read something. Perhaps you may have heard it before, but, but I, it, it correlates with what we're going to talk about on this morning. We're, what we're talking about, church? We're talking about appreciation. excellent ministry, excellent appreciation. That's what we're talking about this morning. But why is that important? Why is that important? Why, why do somebody from the outside have to come and tell us to appreciate our preacher. Amen. Why somebody from the outside got to come in and tell us to appreciate those who labor amongst us? Uh, uh, why, why is it that somebody got to tell you to acknowledge your mother and father when, when the Bible already told us that, you know, we are to honor Amen. our mother and father? The Bible already said it, but why do an outside source have to show up to remind us or get us on course? Because at the end of the day, sometimes, you know, we, we get busy with life or sometimes we get busy with ourselves where we become self-centered, where we selectively forget those type of verses. As I said, selectively forget those verses. Oh, it's there. We read it. But we selectively forget those verses are in the Bible. But, but I want to read, read it. Perhaps you have heard it. And one of the things I want to do here at Hartsville, I want to be able to treat, pe preach the whole counsel of God. Yeah. Whether it's dealing with money, yeah. Hartsville can handle it as long as it's in the Bible. Yeah. If it's dealing with sexuality, yeah. if the Bible talk about it, it can be preached from the pulpit. Yeah. And if it's dealing with unity in the body of Christ, if the Bible address it, it can be preached from the pulpit. If it's dealing with lying, if the Bible addresses it, it can be preached from the pulpit. If it's dealing with the man of God, if the Bible addresses it, it can be preached from the pulpit. I, I never want to get in a situation because I know it's going to make some people uncomfortable that I'm afraid to preach what thus says the Lord. I, I would rather preach the word of God and make you uncomfortable and make God comfortable because he know what he said than to appease you and make you ease at Zion and then I make God uncomfortable in heaven. Amen. 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 In Hartsville, if nobody else, 
understand what the Word of God says or they're not willing to deal with certain things that the Bible talks about. Uh -uh, we have to be mature enough yeah. Oh, yeah. to deal with what thus says the Lord. Amen. Even though it makes us uncomfortable. Yeah. Even though it may not be an easy topic. Yeah. Right? Amen. So, so, you might have heard this. And I, I, if you have, I'll just read it again. But someone has done a study and, and they came to the resolve. They said a preacher's plight. They say the preacher of a church is in a precarious position. He can't please everyone. It has been said if he is young, he lacks experience. If his hair is gray, he's too old for the young people. If he has several children, he has too many. If he has no children, he's setting a bad example. If he preaches from his notes, he has canned sermons and is too dry. If he doesn't use notes, he has not studied and he is not beat. If he is attentive to the poor people in the church, they claim he is playing to the grandstand. If he pays attention to the wealthy, he is trying to be an aristocrat. If he suggests changes for improvement to the church, he is a dictator. If he makes no suggestions, he is a figurehead. If he uses too many illustrations, he neglects the Bible. If he doesn't use enough illustration, he isn't clear. If he condemns wrong, he is cranky. If he doesn't preach against sin, he is a compromiser. If he fails to please somebody, he's hurting the church and ought to leave. If he tries to please everyone, he is a fool. If he preaches about money, he's a money grabber. If he doesn't preach spiritual giving, he is failing to develop the people. If he drives an old car, he shames the congregation. If he drives a new car, he is setting his affections on the earthly things. If he drives, if he preaches all the time, the people get tired of hearing one man. If he invites guest speakers, he is shirking his responsibilities. If he receives a large salary, he's a mercenary. If he receives only a small salary, well, he proved he isn't worth much anyway. Uh, uh, according to uh, um, this network, they done a study and they found that 80% of preachers believe ministry has negative, negatively affected their families. 80% of the preachers they poll, ministry has negatively Y'all know what I'm talking about. Negatively. <laughs> affected their family. According to this poll, 33% said that being in ministry is an outright hazard to their families. 75% of the people polled report a significant stress-related crisis at least once in their ministry. 50% uh, feel unable to meet the demands of their job. 70% say they have a lower self-image now than when they started preaching. 40% reported a serious conflict with a parishioner at least once a month. 50% um, um, of those who were polls um, they said that when they go into ministry, in five years, 50% of the people that went into ministry have stopped preaching altogether. According to this poll, between 1,400 to 1,600 Christian leaders leave the ministry every month. Those are some alarming statistics. Because the Bible already told us, the Bible told us, and, and this book that we're reading, the Hebrew writer already dealt with it. He told us, and I, I just remind us, the Hebrew writer told us, uh, let me find that verse. I was planning on taking you over there, but 
Hebrews 13, 17, and 18. You can turn it over there if you want. But look what the Bible says. The Bible says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give an account. Uh -uh, they, 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 they're not just accountable to you. They are accountable to God, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible says that they may do it with joy. Mm -hmm. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says, now, it's a part that you play whether they are going to be able to do it with some joy. Because they got to give an account, right? Mm -hmm. And then look what it goes on to say. He says, and not with grief. He says, for that is unprofitable for you. Pray for us, for we trust. We have a good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says, now, based on the behavior and the attitudes of those who the minister or the preacher serve, is going to determine the fruit or the outcome of the man of God's preaching. See, the devil likes to get us in a dilemma. Amen. The devil likes to get us in a dilemma. And I want to play to come on the floor this soon, but I see some eyes batting already. Amen. Maybe if I get in your face, you won't go to sleep on me. Maybe you'll still go to sleep on me in your face, but, but at least I'm going to try to pre prevent that. But the devil likes to get us in a dilemma. Where we give the pulpit grief. And now every time someone addresses the pews from the pulpit, now there's animosity between the pulpit and the pews. Now the pulpit is doing it not with some joy, doing it with grief. But the Bible says even if the man of God do it with some grief, it's not going to have the effect that it could have had on your lives because now the man of God is laboring under the rest and he's doing it with grief. Wow. Now, if he was doing it with some joy, not only would it be a blessing to him, but it would be a blessing to you as well. Did I just read that in your Bible? I'm making this stuff up. Amen. The Bible says that it's unprofitable for you. Yes. See, sometimes, oh, I might as well stay there for a minute. See, sometimes we, we worry, we worry. Well, you know, well, I, I can't let the preacher get too high. I got to keep him humble. You think God sent you to the congregation to keep the preacher humble? Are you serious? The devil does a good job of that. The flesh does a good job of that. Oh, you think God sent you here to keep the preacher humble? And, and sometimes we think because, you know, God wants to see the man of God blessed. And God is blessing the man of God and elevating the man of God. Sometimes we think that that's taken away from us. But the Bible lets us know that when the man of God can labor under some joy, it's a benefit to everyone. Oh, God, Brother McCutcheon, thank you for that sound. I add more to it before I take it back. It's right there in the Bible. Amen. The Bible says it's unprofitable for you. And the devil loves for us to stop working together, loves for us to begin to be rebellious, love for us, uh, I, ain't, I ain't doing nothing for that church. I ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing nothing for them. But really, are you doing it for them or are you doing it for God? Really, are you looking for God to ultimately see your level of co 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 cooperation? Or are you uh -uh, just sitting back because you think that somebody else is going to be blessed due to your actions? That's the wrong attitude anyway. One of the things that I can truly say, when I was the assistant minister at Metro Central Church of Christ for four years, 
And, you know, I was in school, and I was the assistant minister, and, you know, I, I did everything that I was asked to do, whether it was to teach the Sunday school class, whether it was to be on the Lord's table, whether it was to clean the building, whether it was to cut the grass, whether it was to teach a class, whether it was to fill in the pulpit, whatever I was asked to do, Amen. I was willing to do it. Amen. And do y'all not know, do y'all not know, like the devil always do, mm. the devil tried to get in my ear mm. with some members. Amen. Ooh, you preached a good sermon. I think you ought to be the preacher. Amen. I think you ought to be the preacher. But in my mind, number one, I appreciate the opportunity that I was given, number yes. one. Yes. And number two, if you would just stab your preacher in the back like that and go over with me, yeah. when I come in the seat, it won't be long before you stab me in the back and go with somebody else. Woo! Oh, don't you keep preaching like that. You ought to be the preacher. Jesus. Nah, nah. In due time, God, if I humble myself, in due time, God said he will elevate me. I don't have to do nothing conniving to uh, um, take somebody's pulpit or take somebody's situation. Amen. God said that he will elevate you in due time. Yes. And, and do y'all not know? I, I still gave. Yes. I still appreciated my man of God, what, what he did in my life. Do y'all not know? I, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about I was in ministry. Oh, yes. Assistant. If anybody, I, I could have had an excuse when I ain't doing nothing else. Mm. I they ain't going to wear me out. <laughs> but did I come? Oh, let me invest. Let me. When I, and what part of the reason I chose the church that I was at was the fact that I wanted to be able to work. Amen. Okay, okay. I know we're videoing, and this is the truth anyhow. This is mm -hmm. part of my testimony. Uh, when I came back to the church, Dr. Mark Thompson, who father just passed, he was at Linwood Church of Christ on the other side of town in Detroit. Linwood Church of Christ. They were experiencing exponential growth. He got there, it was probably about 150 people. Uh, in a year's time, they probably was up to 400 or 500 people. Exponential growth. Because you had people who were transferring their membership, but you also had people who were being baptized. And when I went over there, he, he was the son of the director of the school I went to. Loved this preacher. I just texted him this morning, telling him that I appreciate him, so on and so forth. We, and we still stay in contact. But when I went over there, I seen he had a hundred men, Jesus. women. He had a hundred people ready to put in work. Jesus. Right? Amen. But on the other side of the town, it was a little church called Metro Central Church of Christ. And lo and behold, it was closer to where I live. But when I went over there, my mindset was that, okay, I'm going to go over here and, and I'm going to see how I can help this ministry. Amen. Now, if I just wanted to have some church, I could have went to Linwood. Amen. I could have just sat on the bench. I could have been in a number and they were doing some things. I don't take that away from them. Exponential growth. Mayor coming to the church. The mayor came to the church. Before uh, uh, the ministry uh, uh, went on, uh, um, the governor came to the church. Exponential growth. But my point wasn't just to look good and, and be in the pews and, and, and say that I was there and I was a part of it. God, show me where you can use me at. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. But now, now, okay, God show me where he can use me at. When I get over there, the house is already set. Yes. Now I'm going to go over there and say, I'm taking over? Amen. No, I don't go in there talking about, I'm taking over. I'm here. God sent me here. No. Amen. I came to assist. Yes. I came to grow. I came to develop and see how God is going to use me under what was taking place, under the leadership that was already in place. Amen. I don't come over there disrespecting the leadership that's already in place? Yes, amen. If not, I'm doing Saul, Saul. Amen. Why do you persecute me? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. See, sometimes we hurt ourselves because we think that God doesn't want 
appreciation. He already told us that, you know, obey them so they can do it with some joy. Amen. He says, cooperate with them so they can do it with some joy. Amen. Right? Amen. Uh -uh. See, see, otherwise, the church is going to remain stagnant. Yes. We're not going to be able to go to the level that God is trying to take us to. That's why the Bible tells us God loves uh, cheerful giving. Amen. Don't do things grudgingly oh, yeah. or of necessity. Mm. Amen. He says he loves a cheerful giver because he says that that's going to take us to another level. Amen. Yeah. Now, I know we know it when it comes to our personal relationships. You know, um, Amen. I, I like being married. And me and my wife, we're we about to get ready to celebrate nine years. Marriage Wednesday. Amen. Praise Amen. God for that. Praise God. Oh, ain't nobody going to say nothing for that. Amen. Praise God for that anyhow. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I appreciate my wife. Excellent wife. Excellent appreciation. Amen. I love my wife. I love my wife. Uh, she is who God ordained to be with me. Amen. Amen. But in the relationship, every time we see each other, she mad with me? I know I got to be the husband that I got to be, but really? We going to have animosity between us? It's going to affect ultimately the husband that I ultimately can be. I don't, uh, come on, y'all. Let's just be truthful. If your husband is not respecting you to the point or esteeming you to the level you should be esteemed to, it's going to affect the woman that, or the wife that you ultimately could be. Amen. Now, I, I'm not telling you to stop being the wife, but at the end of the day, it's not going to bring out the best in you. Yes. It's just going to, you know, the status quo, and, and we still together. <laughs> but I told my wife a long time ago, I don't just want to be a cellmate, I want to be a soulmate. Now, a cellmate, you just lock together and you can't get out of it. But a soulmate is that I want to be with you. Yeah, amen. You, you bring me joy. Amen. You the apple of my eye. Yes. All those flowery words. You the wind with underneath my wings. Y'all know all that flowery stuff. I, I want it to be true. Amen. I don't want it to just be said, amen, and it's just a front. We can live this. Yes. And that's what God is trying to tell us. Amen. Amen. It don't take nothing away from you. Jesus. Amen. By appreciating the man or the, 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 the leadership that labor among you, that don't take. Matter of fact, when you do stuff to subvert or undermine the leadership, it's, it's self-sabotaging. Yes. Amen. It don't just hurt him. It hurts you. Amen. It hurts your children. It hurts your family. It hurt uh, uh, what ultimately God wants to do in this church and in this community. Amen. It don't just hurt him. Yes. Oh God, let me give y'all some examples. Y'all remember? Y'all remember when um, Moses' brother and sister decided to undermine him? Amen. Have God only spoken to you, Moses? And God showed up. He said, no, nah, no, nah, I speak directly to Moses. Now, nah, you, you know, watch how you handle Moses. Amen. And, and the Bible says as a result of them disrespecting Moses, God put a plague on them. Amen. But Moses being so meek, humble, mm. interceded for people who came for him. Now, if that was some of us, you came for me, that's what you get. You don't mess with the man of God. You don't mess with the man of God. But the Bible says Moses interceded on their behalf because that was his heart. But they could have easily turned Moses' heart, and we see that they did. Moses coming to, to give them war. They steady complain. Oh, Moses, you brought me out in this. Oh, come on, y'all. Brought me out in this wilderness to die. Mm -hmm. Moses said, Man, I, I, Lord, 
these your people. Right. The Lord said, them your people. <laughs> Moses said, hit that rock. God said, now Moses, I know the people getting on your nerve, but now you disrespecting me. And he says, as a result of you disrespecting me, he said, you're not going to go over into the promise. God said, I'm going to even allow you to see it. You can view it, but you ain't going there. And I stopped about to tell somebody, y'all not about to keep me out the promised land. Amen. Amen. Oh, I, I told y'all this was going to be a rough one, but it's in the Bible anyhow. Amen. Look what the Bible says. Oh, this is good. This is good. Hebrews chapter number 8, verse number 1 through verse number 6. The Bible says, now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens a minister of the sanctuary in the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man has somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law who serve unto the example and shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was a monist of God, when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, says he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Verse number six is where I got my title from. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator, of uh, a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Now, quickly turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. And we'll make a few points and then the lesson will be yours. 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. And let's see what the Bible says. Let's see what the Bible says. Matter of fact, I want chapter number three. Chapter number three. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter number three. It says, do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we as some other epistles of commendation? to you, or letters of commendation from you. Ye are our epistles, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ, ministered by us, note that, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Uh, uh, but look what the Bible says. The Bible says that we are ministers of the New Testament. We are ministers of the New Covenant. And, and why is that important? That's important because as we read Hebrews chapter number 8, and I got to read it. I, I wasn't going to read it, but I got to read it for this to make sense. Uh, let's go back over to Hebrews, the 8th chapter, um, and let's read the last four verses. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says, beginning at verse number 9. Um, well, let's just do it for the context. Verse number 7, for that the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel 
and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand and to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continue not in my covenant. And I regarded them not, says the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he has a new covenant. He has made the first old. Now that which decays and waxes, wax old is ready to vanish away. Now I know we did a lot of reading, but I want this to connect. I read all that for a reason, and it's in your Bible for a reason. But what I want us to recognize and see, I know based on your experience and based on who you talk to, um, those who serve in leadership can get a bad rap. It can be some bad things said about them. Uh, people have low expectations for those who serve in ministry, those who serve as preachers, and, and people have had bad experiences. And so uh, people have, to a degree, given up or they don't esteem preachers as they once esteemed preachers. Now, what I want to say is, Based on others' experience, based on how other people see leaders in the church, God's opinion about leaders are still the same. Amen. It don't change because of your experience. It don't change because of your mother's experience. It don't change because of your, your uncle was a preacher and he was a crook. It, it don't change because of that. God's opinion about preachers are still the same, and it don't change because of the opinions of people. Amen. Yeah. And, and I like to use illustrations because we know it, it don't matter if you had a bad mother or not. God still say, esteem your parents. Amen. It don't say, uh, uh, well, if you got a good parent that bring you to Sunday school and bring you to Wednesday night Bible class, then you esteem. No, no, no. The Bible says if they your parent, you esteem them just because they your parent. Amen. Amen. God don't change that. But the Bible is letting us know with the priesthood being changed, the order of priests have changed. The Bible lets us know when Jesus became the high priest, the order of the priesthood changed. Mm. Now, this is what I want y'all to keep in mind. One, on one occasion, Jesus told the disciples and those who were in listening reigns, he said, John the Baptist is the greatest person that ever been born, right? Y'all remember that? Or I, I, maybe y'all need to read that because I, I don't want y'all to think I'm quoting this out of context. But the Bible said that he was the greatest man ever born. But Jesus said, let me tell you something. Those who are in the kingdom are greater than him. Y'all remember that conversation? Amen. Amen. What the Bible is saying, and, and I didn't read it all, but I was reading over there, 2 Corinthians 3 chapter, the Bible tells us if the old covenant, those who labor under the old covenant, where it was glorious, the Bible says what we labor under the new covenant is more glorious. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Oh, I, I wish y'all could feel this. I wish y'all could feel this. The Bible lets us know. Matter of fact, let me mention this. On one occasion, Jesus 
he just opposed himself with um, Solomon and Jonah. Mm. He said, now, in the days of Solomon, the queen from the south came all the way from where she was to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus said, there's one that's greater than Solomon here. Mm -hmm. And then he went on and he said, now, Nineveh repented at the preaching of Jonah. He said, but there's one greater than Jonah here. Y'all remember Amen. that conversation that Jesus had that? Amen. But what Jesus was saying is, he was saying, now what they preach, as we know from studying Hebrews, it really didn't remove sin. Yes. It really didn't take away sin. What it did was to show us how much of a sinner we was and how much we violated God's law. Even with the scapegoat, when you read the Old Testament, uh, uh, they had the scapegoat that came out once a year. Even with the high priest, he would go in the Holy of Holies once a year to apply the blood to the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. Amen. But it did not remove the sin. What it did, it just appeased God. It just rolled back his wrath for one more year. Mm -hmm. Amen. But the Bible said, those who preach the gospel, they are preaching liberation. Mm -hmm. They are preaching freedom in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus said on one occasion, he said, all the prophets before you, they long for a day like this where they can see the thing that you are seeing. Mm -hmm. That's why even uh, uh, as a preacher, it's more weightier for us in this dispensation when it was for them in that dispensation. Because they look unto Christ Jesus, but we preach from Christ Jesus coming, dying, resurrected, and, and now he's in heaven reigning. And we preach from that position, right? Amen. He has conquered death, hell, and the grave. Amen. Now it's more weightier for us to get the word out. Okay, y'all ain't helping me. Y'all giving me this look like I'm up to something, but I, I'm trying to show y'all, I'm trying to show y'all how this connect and why he said this, why this is a more excellent ministry. Amen. What we just read in Acts the 8th chapter, he said in the new covenant, a time is coming where you no longer have to tell your neighbor, come learn of God. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to write it on their heart. Okay, what does that mean, Brother Smith? Because this is the connection right here. Excellent ministry, excellent appreciation. Here's the connection. The Bible is letting us know, under the old covenant, we wouldn't have access to God anyway. Mm. You have to be a Jew. And then listen to this, listen to this, Sister Trome. Look, uh-uh. You wasn't converted. You were born in it. Mm. Uh -huh. Don't don't leave me, Sister Anderson. Don't leave yeah. me, Sister Anderson. Yeah. What God is explaining, He's explaining under the old covenant, they were born in it, and as they grew up, they had to be taught who they were. Amen. Y'all ain't gonna talk about it. Jesus. But under the new covenant, uh -huh. He said, everyone that's a part of my family. They already going to be taught of me before they become a part of my family. That's why faith come by hearing. Yes. And hearing the word of God. How can they preach unless they are sent? Yes, Jesus. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel? Why is he saying this? He's saying this because it's a more excellent ministry. Everyone that's a part of this covenant wants to be a part of this covenant. Amen. You're not just born in it. And, and that's why, that's why it's important. That's why it's important that we keep that attitude, that the fact that God has been good to us, he's been grateful to us. Amen. Amen. This was by our choice, and we need to keep the joy that we had when we were saved. We need to keep it even in ministry and even while we are in the pews. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you. See, he says the day is going to come under the new covenant. It ain't going to just be based on your bloodline. Mm -hmm. Well, my daddy was in the tribe of Benjamin, so um, I guess I'm a Benjamite. No, you make the choice if you want to be a son or daughter of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. God don't have no grandchildren. Mm -hmm. 
God don't have no grandchildren. Amen. Amen. Only sons and daughters. Amen. He says, he says under the new covenant, and y'all know he was quoting from Jeremiah. Yes. He said under the new covenant, it's going to be written on their heart. Amen. It's not about, okay, I know you've been a Jew, a part of the uh, a tribe of Judah all your life, so let me, let me come and explain to you who you are. No, no, no. You share the gospel, and as a result of you sharing the gospel, whosoever will, uh -huh. Uh -huh. let them come. Amen. Once you respond to the gospel, it's written on your heart. Y'all remember we just read over there in um, 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. He said, you are living epistles written on your heart under the new covenant. Amen. Thank you. The word of God has pricked our heart and God has sealed us with his writing. So what they got to do with the preacher? You are, as a preacher, you are administering a more excellent ministry. Okay, okay. I'm leaving y'all alone. I'm leaving y'all alone. But the Bible says, those who labor among you, matter of fact, I want y'all to see this because I told y'all we have selective memory sometimes. So let me let me show y'all this verse and then we're going we gonna to leave out. Let's turn it over to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. And we're going to close out on this note. Verse number 12 and verse number 13. Look what he says. He says, and we beseech you, brother, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love. Why, why you do it? Because you like them? Because y'all go to the same Rotary Club? Because y'all grew up together? Because y'all live in the same neighborhood? Because y'all went to dinner together? No, no, he didn't say that's why you esteem them. He said the reason you esteem them is for their work's sake. He, he, said, he said, no, it ain't, it ain't, you ain't got to like them. You should like them, but, but you don't have to like them. The reason you esteem them because I esteem them. It's a crying shame. It's a crying shame mm -hmm. when we when we can put in our children to look up to everybody except for people in the church. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's a crying shame. Amen. If you don't have no role models in the church, and we supposed to be the light of the world, Amen. and you trying to tell them to go, uh, uh, oh, you should look up to somebody else in the community who don't have a covenant with God. That's a crying shame. Amen. Amen. I'm leaving. I'm closing. I, I might have to do a two-part on this, this but I, I, went, I was trying to let it go. But if you go back over to Hebrews, the 13th chapter, you don't have to go over there now. But one of the things that he said, he said the reason that you esteem them the reason that you follow them, he said, also, you should be able to follow their example when it comes to faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. If you cannot appreciate leadership in the preacher, God is saying, what living example are you going to have when it comes to Christianity? We studied it, we studied it, we studied it. First Timothy, Second Timothy, and Titus. One of the things that they kept being told is to be an example. Be an example. So if you're going to be an example, what the Bible is saying, it's going to be somebody looking to you for leadership and being the right example. But well. Well, with people being all they can be in the local congregation, you still telling them, I know, I know you should be in Sunday school, but go on and play sports on Sunday. Hey, amen. Okay. 
I told y'all I was closing, but y'all know this this excellent ministry, excellent appreciation. Y'all got to appreciate me going down through here. Amen. They felt to be in church, and, and ultimately that's what we saying we want them to be. Mm -hmm. But yet, and still, you 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 esteem other things higher than the training that they are be getting at the local church. It's something wrong with that. Amen. It's something wrong with that when you know you tell them to go to bed early. <laughs> On Sunday night, but they can stay up to two o'clock in the morning on Saturday night. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. It's something wrong with that. Now I know the world might not think nothing about Sunday school. I know the world it might not be important for the world to come to worship, but as a child of God, it doesn't change the, what the Bible has said about the church and what He has said about us meeting together. It don't change how the it don't matter how the world sees it. It's what God has said on the issue. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, Jesus has entered into heaven once and sat at the right hand of God for eternity. No more changing of the priesthood, right? No more changing of the priesthood. This is set for eternity. Amen. A more excellent ministry. Mm -hmm. But the Ephesian writer told us that God has given gifts to the local church. Amen. Some pastors. Yes. Some evangelists. Some teachers. Y'all remember those gifts he gave? Amen. And anytime God gives you a gift because it's an extension of him. When we appreciate the gift that don't take away from the gift, the gift given. Amen. 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 I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm closing. Let's stand. I got to make this point as you're standing. Because if y'all keep sitting, I'm going to keep making points. Amen. <clears throat> just because I appreciate, just because I appreciate a watch. Matter of fact, this is a good example. This watch that my wife gave me. I don't know when she gave it to me, but she gave it to me. Uh, this watch she gave me. Just because I appreciate the watch doesn't take away from the person who gave it to me. Amen. Oh, God. I, I thought that was a good point. I thought that was a good point. See, sometimes we think when we appreciate the gift that God has given, it take away from the gift giver. It don't take away from the gift giver. Amen. If you read the Bible, every time that God showed up, it wasn't the fact that a man of God was being adored or uh, uh, appreciated. God showed up when the man of God was being persecuted. Mm -hmm. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Mm -hmm. Do you not know you're not just fighting against him, you're fighting against me. Okay. When they stoned Stephen, that's when Christ showed up. Amen. Right? But every time appreciation was going on, he didn't step in and say, oh, no, that appreciation is supposed to go to me. Mm. Because he know he's the one who gave the gift anyway. Yes. Amen. Amen. Byron, does this make sense? Jesus. Amen. If, 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 if you appreciate your wife, that doesn't stop you from appreciating God who gave her to you. It, it don't. It don't. But we uh, allow the devil to creep in and absolve us of something that God has clearly said in the scriptures. And, and I, 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 I gotta, I'm going to leave it alone because it's about to take me somewhere else because Jesus dealt with it. But on this morning, on this morning, God gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have eternal life. He said, faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. He said, don't only just hear, but you got to believe. Amen. You got to repent. That means you got to have a, a, a shift of the way you think. It ain't about the way I see things. It's about how God sees things. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to give up my point of view for God's point of view. Amen. And then the Bible says, you got to be willing to confess him even before man. He said, if you don't confess me before man, I won't confess you before my heavenly father. Amen. And then he said, you must be willing to go in the water grave of baptism. You'll go down as a sinner. But it's something that takes place by faith in the water. Amen. 
It's a transaction that takes place in the water. Where you go down in the water, your death, burial, and resurrection, you go down as a sinner, you come up as a saint. And the Bible says God adds you to his church. Put your name in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. And then he tells you to go on and be faithful even unto death. And you shall receive a crown of righteousness, a crown of life. On this morning, that's the invitation. As a child of God, if you just need prayers, perhaps for something we talked about, because there is a such thing as church hurt. Sometimes we, we, we experience church hurt, so we give up on everything. Jesus. And then we view people through the hurt that we experience. Mm -hmm. I'm not even on that, but you, 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 you viewing me through an experience that you had. Mm -hmm. And you might just need prayer in that area. And, and it's more common than we like to believe. Amen. It's, and, and matter of fact, the Hebrew writer is going to talk about that, that root of bitterness. Mm -hmm. A root of bitterness. You, you don't forget all about it, but it's in you. It's in Jesus, the roots. Jesus. That's how you view it. Through that bitterness, that hurt that you experience. On this morning, the Bible still says, excellent ministry, excellent appreciation. Amen. And God say, I add more to it, then I take it back. Amen. Amen. We're not even going to sing because I don't took all y'all time. I don't took all y'all time. Y'all got chicken on, 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 the, on the stove and it's some greens. Do you put greens in the oven? Hey, hey Amen. It's some cornbread in the oven. So I know y'all got to get to y'all food. Right? And some of y'all got to get in line at Cracker Barrel. So I, I got to go ahead and cut this. But any requests, any requests while we stand, any requests while we stand, any requests while we stand. Sister Pam. I'm traveling back to Florida this week.